Good afternoon. I'm back. Pause now. Have we got everybody here? We all good now? Maybe. Hello, Sandy. Do we have a dark Hi. jester? No, we don't. We don't. Okay, so dark jester will join us later. <laughs> so, uh, good afternoon, ninjas. Um, this will be the final round table before Christmas, so it's a kind of a special one. Uh, we've had some cool news this week. Uh, we got a mention of the art community crunch wildcard puts out. Um, that's an absolute credit to John, um, who's taken over our marketing campaign to bring in new players, promote the branding, uh, and sort of expand our social media. So thank you ever so much, John. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, we've also had some likes and retweets and mentions from Nekatus, developer of the Fjordjo map. And we've had some mentions from Cedric as well, who's Wildcard's community manager. So we've been doing really, really well on the social front. Um, we've got a fair bit to cover for games this week. Um, start with Ark. Lost Island's doing extremely well. Personally loving the map. I think it's really nice. Um, seems to have brought in a whole brand new bunch of players as well. So it'd be nice and say hi and get to know everybody. Um, Ark Editions was dropped as well, the collection. So that's now live. Um, I've seen a few people have got some really cool new tames now. Um, we haven't had to tweak many things with that. The only thing that's changed since the launch is we had to remove the giant alligators, the dinosuchus from Aberration. Um, there was a huge, huge problem with the overspawn, which we just, there was no way, no matter what we changed it to, that was going to fix. They were just like hundreds and hundreds of them up the riverway, so they had to go. But you can catch one of those on any of the other maps. Or they can catch you. Or, or yes, as has happened to me many, many times now, trying to tame those dinosaurs, they will most definitely catch you and uh, end your life early. Um, we've got some news on the more additional aberrant dinos that we added. Um, after some discussion with a few players and the Orange Ninjas, we've redone the list of excluded dinos. So we're going to be adding in from tomorrow's maintenance the aberrant Tyrannio, the aberrant Eurypted. Uh, these will all be on Aberration. Uh, Aberrant Moth, Pterodon, Quetzal. The Rock Golem is going to make an appearance. That's going to be interesting. Uh, the Tapijara. And the big one for this week is the Aberrant Dy Dynonychus. So the difference with the Aberrant Dynonychus on Aberration is it gets a 75% improvement on its base health. And I think it's a 50% increase on Stam. So... To counteract this being like the best Dionicus we can get and making all the other ones sort of a bit of nondescript, we're also going to be enabling the Kraken's better dino buff on all Dionicus to even the board. They get basically with that, they get the same buff as the Aberrant. So huge changes coming here. Um, the Dionicus will now be able to lay fertilized eggs across anywhere they spawn. And these eggs now will be dropping up to level 190. So the dines that are going to be on the map from now on are going to be kind of a, a different entity. They're going to be their own thing rather than the base game, which bases them all on raptors, which is why they're only spawnable at 150. So enjoy the new Dynonychus. I'm sure a few people are going to be really excited about that. Um, you can convert your existing dines into better dines as well. And I've popped a post in the news channel on the, where is it? Hear ye, hear ye. And you'll be able to see the differences between having a vanilla or a better Dynonychus. So that's that's all good stuff. Um, now, I think um, it's probably because of the way don Dinos are done. Yeah, uh, we can't auto convert them and auto convert them back, and the buff will only do so much for it. So my advice is to convert um, to the KBD version. Yeah. That way you won't have any problems with it. They're going to be superior in most ways. They're going to be awesome. And I know quite a few people who collect them are going to be really pumped to go out and get some of the new eggs and get some higher level ones. Um, I, I, even, I think as well that you're only going to get the buffed version with in the wild, and then you manually convert them when you lay the egg. Yes, I think so. Yeah. So other exciting news then for Ark. We're going to be making some more changes tomorrow at downtime. Um, one of them is going to be a huge new system called Items Plus. 
So do you want to go into what that's all about, DJ, as you've been putting lots of work into that this week? Um, yes, essentially, we're going to have our own custom uh, cross-server transfer system set up. So when you want to travel between uh, one arc to another, you normally go to the obelisk, you upload all your shit. Um, you can either carry it with you or you need to upload stuff if you've got too much. Don't have to worry about that anymore. You go to the transmitter, even if you've got a maxed out inventory, it will upload it all. It will take a little while if you've filled every single inventory slot, but it'll tell you what it's doing. And once it's finished doing the automatic upload to our database, not the game's database, you'll then move over to the other map. Then when you arrive on the other map, it'll automatically download all your stuff from our database back to your character. Same restrictions apply though um, with uploading. If it's blocked by the game, it won't upload to our system. But this will mean um, you will no longer have to do anything when you get to an obelisk. Just walk up to it, travel to another map, done. Cool. And this is going to mean some changes to shoulder pets as well, right? Yes, um, shoulder pets will travel with you too. If you forget to put them away, they will pop into a little soul trap and appear in your inventory upon arrival. Um, obviously, once you throw them out, that soul trap will then disappear. Uh, the other thing as well is if somehow you manage to get so much stuff into the transfer that you can't physically carry it when you get to the other end, um, it'll tell you you have um, stuff left and it won't download it to your character. Um, you then have 60 minutes to uh, unload, do forward slash download and collect the rest of your stuff. So this is going to be so, really good for people who who disconnect mid transfer or have yeah completely somehow because, managed to ram their inventory a little bit too full. It's all changing. Yeah, if you if you um, if you uh, DC halfway through a transfer, um, your stuff is already stored in our database. So wherever you log in on the other end, as long as it's not the same map, you can download your stuff again. Um, it won't remove the stuff from our database until you've arrived on a map and successfully completed your download. So cool. it's, it's a full-on replacement for the for the entire inter arc transfer system. Slowly, things making th making things a little bit better so that nobody loses anything and we're a bit more solid. So that's and that's going to be a really cool change. So that's that's going in tomorrow. Something. And Sorry, That's okay. off the Come back on. of on the back of off the back of that uh, system that we'll be installing, it'll give us a lot more control over blueprints and things that you would collect in game. Now, one of the um, criticisms um, we have of our cluster um, is, as maps age over time, people build up massive banks of blueprints uh, max level, and new players come along and you know, blueprinted high level items just get handed out like candy because they don't have any value anymore. So one thing I want to roll by you all is blueprints having a set number of charges like tech blueprints. So yes, you could blueprint something and yes, you could give it away, but it will have a finite amount of value to it. And then that person will have to come back to the original source again and go, yeah, can I have another one. Or you'll have to make a blueprint, lose some materials and carry on that way. Thoughts on that one, and we'll discuss in the dojo later. Yeah. Anybody who's got any comments, you know where to go. Dojo under the um, dark section. I think that sounds pretty cool, to be honest. It might it might be a good thing. It might, it might not, but personally, I like that. That's cool. Correct. You can't um, BP stuff if it's got crafting skill on it. And because I, crafting it. Yeah. skill allows you to... Um, Massively boost the stats, but without boosting the um, uh, tier of the item, which doesn't drive up the cost as much. It also stops, I guess, people using crafting skill to craft something, craft it, re-blueprint it, craft it again, and it, it all gets out of hand very, very quickly. That's over time it gets out of hand anyway, so yeah, we need to return the value back to the high level items on the cluster. Yep, definitely. 
um, get the, it will kick the um, market back into place as well and get people in a better place to, to start trading, put some costs on things. And I think that's going to be good for the cluster. It's going to be mm. awesome. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next few days leading up to Christmas, uh, making sure everything's working properly. And then come New Year, we've got some other new ideas we want to talk about, which would be a look into the quest system we've been discussing. Do you want to go into a little bit more detail on that? Um, yes, actually. Um, we will, once we've finished putting in the transfer system, um, I'm going to start looking at, and after docs, I'm going to start looking at a questing system. Uh, for our cluster something that will have two purposes to it one build up a quest chain maybe one that has some storyline behind it um, maybe one that leads new players into the game and gives them some direction when they first start and also the second benefit is it allows us to track um, stats so who's got the most boss kills, um, who's killed, you know, Alpha Monkey most times, who's ascended the most times, all that kind of stuff, who's tamed the most dinos, who's harvested the most berries, all that kind of cool and wonderful stuff. And we want to make those kind of leaderboards and that quest progression and kind of almost an achievement system available to all the players as well. So that's something we really want to look at super excited for that that's that sounds mm. really cool. we've discussed it's, this a few times gonna be pretty cool yeah we've um, never, i don't think we've ever really found the right software to do it have we but it's it seems to have come a long way mm -hmm. um the other thing that is a bit of a surprise for everybody that uh may land before christmas i say may um we will have an in-game interface for the arc shop really yeah really that's cool. Yeah. Um, let me quickly share something with you all. I will pop it into general. And you can have a look and see what you think. It's fairly straightforward. It's just simply like, um, here's kits, here's um, items, you know, pick which ones you want to buy and search the list, click buy. Right. That's uploading to general now. Give it a moment. My super fast speed. <laughs> there we go. It's loaded. Ooh. Oh, wow. That does look pretty cool. That is so cool. Very simple, but just does exactly the job that we need it to do. Nice. You've got items on the left and a tab for kits. You can flip between the two. You've got a filter at the top, which allows you to search for anything you're after. Very lightweight, goes straight in game. It is a mod. It's a companion mod to Arc Shop. So um, as you can see, it's buying stuff from the Arc Shop. So it'll read all our config for us and display your balance in the top right. Ooh, he's redone it, has he? This is a whole new thing. Oh, this is a whole new thing from the other one I've seen. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is this is not this is not paid for or um, this is a whole new companion piece to go with Arc Shop, and it's testing this week. And if it passes testing, it will get released to us before Christmas. Awesome! Oh, that's so cool. that's, that's really cool. Yet again, another reason why we've been, or I particularly have been banging on about social media and getting our presence out there. Because the more our presence is out there, the more we get to look at cool things early, and the more influence we have in the community. We've already got a fair bit when it comes to modding and especially the plugin developers. We're working really close with some of the big ones. So it, it all helps. To answer a couple of questions that have just come up, um, does it tie into the F1 button? No, it's on F2. Or you can do forward slash shop to open it. Um, to answer the second question uh, that was earlier, um, the new transfer system, um, yes, it will reduce the player file size because the player file size will be very small but at the same time if you look still if you learned every single engram we've got you probably still crash on transfer however um, for those of you that need more engram points um, and you want to push the limits get yourself a copy of genesis go to the hex store and buy more engram points 
<laughs> so for those of you that want more engrams, go buy them. Excellent. It'll probably take you several years to be able to uh, learn all of them, and by then hopefully we'll be on ARC 2 and I won't have to worry about you crashing on transfer. <laughs> two years, you reckon? No. ARC 2? Maybe. Sort of. Who knows? Okay, cool. But I you, think that do you, just Do you have any more it. surprises I don't know about? That's cool. Uh, no, I, I don't have any more surprises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. So that's the ARC stuff we've got going on this week. And then obviously moving into next year, the quest system. That's I am so pumped for that. That's going to be awesome. I've, I've wanted to be doing quests for a long, long time now, but there's just never been the stuff there to do it. So super excited. So on to seven days. Uh, what have we got for seven days this week? Um, I think it was two days ago, I updated the seven days A20 experimental server. So this now has the latest bleeding edge version of the dedicated server on there. Um, they've made some changes right. and I posted those changes, I believe, in the dojo. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that's the seven days to die dojo. They've made quite a chunk of changes since we first launched A20. So the experimental one with the horde on currently has the latest bleeding edge all the new spawn points they put in all the new changes are all there go check those out um i wanted to remind everybody as well that there is also an a20 no blood moon server still up um that's still on the original release um is available for all builders people who don't like the horde mode want to play things a little bit more like arc if the A20 experimental stays stable and the feedback is, is really good, I may update the No Blood Moon. So you can all have a look at the new um, changes they made. Um, and as well, the, the experimental server is also running a, a latest sort of custom built map done through um, their custom map generation stuff rather than a random world gen map. And I think when I redo the Blood Moon server, I will do a custom map for that as well. Um, the maps have changed massively. There's no more rough edges to them, and it's all looking really, really good. Um, only other thing I've got to mention seven days wise is rumor has it that Kane has actually started work developing A20 Darkness Falls. I know a lot of people are really looking forward to playing that on A20. He'd said he wasn't going to mess with it, but I guess curiosity got the better of him. So looking forward to seeing what he does with Darkness Falls. I don't expect him to release anything that isn't a test version for like a specific group of people until A20 goes stable. But the fact that he's currently working on it now might mean that it's available very quickly after A20 goes stable. So that's that's all cool. Um, oh, sorry, one more thing. Sure. I, I do do have a minor surprise. Um, if if we get selected, we will have access to the ArcShop UI, possibly uh, tomorrow. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a surprise. So, yeah, so yeah. we could. We it depends. It depends how much lethal lethal um loves us. Lethal loves us lots. We do lots of testing for lethal. Uh, hopefully then yes we'll we'll get selected for that but again that leads back to our social presence how we're seen um we are definitely on the rise people are more aware of who we are and what we do here now um but the more of that we get and the more people start to sit up pay attention and we get cool toys early that's the way the art community works they look to the bigger clusters to do the testing for them and to debut all their new toys so we're starting to get there now Oh. I like toys. Hang on. Toys are awesome. we've, we've, we've got another sneak peek to share. God, grief, the Christmas bag gets bigger and bigger. Let's go. Hang on. Let's uh, see if I can. Give me a moment to upload. Now, this bit's even more exciting. Because you know how it's a pain that you buy kits and then you have to redeem them and see what you uh, have or haven't got? Yeah, so let me push that into there. Upload. Oh, this is a big one. 80 meg. Oh, oh my. Your files are powerful. Oh, by the way, none is. Yes. I had something to mention about Ark. Okay, go ahead. 
I was thinking since it gets so busy over Christmas and stuff mm -hmm. that I will start making the uh, trading post next year. Okay, that's fine. All good. Just so everything calms down. And we got to get okay. Christmas out of the way. Oh, here we go. Mm. Oh, what have we got here? You tap. You tap. Is this oh. going to do what I think it's going to do? It is. I would currently mess my UI up if I have to expand this, but I'm guessing that's showing the contents wow. of the kits, right? Yes, uh, the stash is showing you the kits that you actually own, how many you've got, and a big button to redeem them. That's cool. Wow. Oh, I like this. And then it goes Exciting all Exciting stuff. Yeah. So, anyways. Ooh. Well, while we digest that, uh, so as not to take too much of your time, uh, last thing, last game on the agenda this week is Rust. Um, we have, I, I'm pretty sure we're in the final stages, if not already done, have now successfully hired the programmer we wanted, um, found somebody to finish off all the automation work we've been banging on about for the past couple of months. Uh, we're moving again. It's just been a rough trying to sort out the right person to do it for the right money. Um, Obviously, the time of year is not helping either and the whole pandemic thing, but we, we have a program, I believe. Um, this is going to make automatic delivery of supporter ranks possible across all games, along with any special purchases that deliver items directly to the game. You won't have to wait for a Purple Ninja anymore. Um, so really excited to share all the progress with you guys when we can on that. So Rust is moving again. Effectively, um, we've added a new person to the team. Yes. They will be a um full well full-time developer working on building um tools and resources that allow us to manage the servers much more effectively deliver kits to players in games uh, without needing to have uh, an admin on and will generally automate and help improve all of the stuff that we're doing yeah from you know so, and it won't just stop at automating kits either. We'll, you know, uh, tie that in with real-time leaderboards, stats, rankings, all the kind of cool stuff. Yeah. So we've got some really, really cool stuff coming to show you guys, but this is obviously going into the new year now. This is kind of phase two. So as soon as we can share more on that, we will do. Um, it's going to make Rust a thing. Uh, I think Rust is going to be massive. And it's also going to sort of branch us out into various other areas we can we can do things. So that's that's all good. Um, so moving on from Rust, and obviously this is the last round table for Christmas. So hopefully everything's going to go well. Everybody's going to get together with the families. And from all of us here at Wicked Ninja Games, we wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. We hope you have a great New Year. You've all made this year amazing for us. Um, we had a bad couple of months, but we seem to be spiking massively at the moment. I'm hearing nothing but good things coming in. So thank you ever so much, all of you, all, of, all again. Um, do we have any more questions before we, we sign off? Is there anything else anybody wants to add? First Christmas. For, nothing on my end. First nothing. Christmas for, uh, for Krusty. I think we've got... A, We've got at least a few people now who've done two Christmases with us and maybe a handful of smattering that have done three. Okay, all looks good. So yes, have a merry, merry Christmas. Um, we'll be back in the new year. Eat lots and lots of food and stay safe. So we've been the Wicked Ninjas. You've all been awesome. And good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year and good night.